I am Kani Reza. Welcome to Amazing Science Lessons. Today I am going to demonstrate a cause and effect water science experiment. And the first thing I would do is ask the children, what is this? And naturally they're going to say it's a pine cone because we have been studying pine cones. So since this is a pine cone, we are going to do a pine cone water experiment with the children. And the children are going to help me. My probing question is, what do you think will happen to this pine cone when I put it in water? We have discovered that inside the pine cone are seeds. Now if I put it in water, what do you think is going to happen? What, I'm, what I want the children is to predict what they think is going to happen to the pine cone, of course, after it's been dipped in water. And I am going to take all the answers from the children. So one of the, one of the words that they will probably quickly pop out is, it's going to get wet. Absolutely, you're right, it's going to get wet. And of course, we are using our five senses except the sense of taste. So I'm going to write, you're absolutely right, it's going to get wet. Our pine cone, when we put it in water, it's going to probably going to get wet. What else do you think is going to happen to our pine cone? Now we've been, we have studied sink and float. So what are the kids probably going to say? Oh, it's going to float. You're right. It's going to float. So I'm going to write the word float. F-L-O-A-T. Float. Anything else? Oh, it's probably going to change color. Okay, I'm going to write change color. Change. C-H-A. And G-E. Change color, C-O-L-O-R. The children will probably continue to, do, to, to give you words of what they think is going to happen when I put it in water. And continue to write those words. Just continue writing, writing all the words that they come up with. After they finish, anything else? After, yeah, the, no more words are coming up. Now let's take a vote. How many of you think the pine cone is going to get wet when I put it in water? Let's raise your hand. How many of you think it's going to get wet? And naturally, probably all the children are going to raise their hands. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, however too many children you have. So I'm going to say 10. How many of you think it's going to just float? And that's all. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six children think it's just going to float. How many of you think it's going to change color? Hmm, one, two, three, four, five. Five children think it's going to change color. And of course, I'm going to continue taking a vote on all the words the children give me. They, I'm allowing them to predict what they think will happen. This is very, very important for children to understand when we're doing an experiment. Now while, while we're, we're going to observe the pine cone for one hour and of course we in kindergarten even in pre-k it's very important that you start talking about time. So I'm going to tell them okay I want you to look at my clock and remember we've been talking about the big hand. The big hand is the one that moves faster all the way around. So we're going to be looking at the big hand. Where is the big hand right now? It's on the 12th. So we're going to observe our pine cone for 15 minutes. And I'm going to dip it in water. And while it's being dipped in water, you're going to go to your journals and you're going to draw your pine cone. So I'm going to put it in right now. And I'm going to go to another chart. And here I'm going to put... Uh, my timeline. Time line. L I N E. Timeline. So right here, I'm going to put 10 o'clock. 
10 o'clock, my pine cone looks like this, right? Like this, it's all completely open. So that's my pine cone, because I'm putting it in water. Now at this time, I want children to go back to their journals, and I want you to draw the pine cone. Draw the pine cone. And go ahead and write the word pine cone, P-I-N-E, cone on your journal. And it's open. You see that bracks are open? They're open. It's brown. For older children, it's very important that you continue writing. Younger children, just write the, the, uh, the time. Now, while children are doing their, their right, uh, drawing in their journal, you as a teacher are coming around to see as children are beginning to uh, talk about it. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. You will start hearing children already anticipating. Now, for video purpose, I'm going to show you a pine cone that has been sitting for 15 minutes. Here is one of my pine cones that I set for 15 minutes. Now, as you can see already, that is beginning to close. So, after my timer goes off in 15 minutes, of course, I, I have set it in front of the children. After the timer goes off, they're going to come back together and they're going to say, Oh, look at 15 minutes have gone by. Look at the pine cone. Does it look the same as it did earlier? So does it look like this? No, how does it look? Oh, I can see the, the branks much clearer. They're, they're closed. Okay, so I'm going to put here 10, 15. Remember, every 15 minutes, our timer is set for 15 minutes, which means when the timer goes off, all the children will come back to observe what's been going on. So now I'm going to draw it. Now I'm going to draw it a little bit. The bracts are a little bit closer. Oh, look at my pine cone. Does yours look like that? So now what am I going to write? Oh, it's closing. C-L-O-S-I-N-G. And it's still, it's still open. You see that it's still open? So I'm going to say, yes, it's closing and partially open. So encourage children to write in their journals. Now, let me show you what 15 minutes later looks like. Here I have another one. Look at it. How does it look? Does it look like this one? No, this one is completely closed. Does it look like this one? So you can see the difference, a big difference. So now I'm going to go to my chart and I'm going to put 10, what is 15 minutes later? 10.30. And of course, we're going to keep looking at our clock. In 15 minutes, they're going to see that it's 10.15. It's on the 15th. And at 10.30, they're going to see that 15 minutes later, now it's down here on the 6th. So now it's 30 minutes. So now my pine cone looks like this. And then, of course, the little bricks there, the little prickly needles right there. So you can see. Can you see the big difference? This is a great, great experiment for children to see. Now, after they see this, my next question is, what caused the pine close to completely close from here to here? And this is a little bit big. Let me get a smaller one. What made the pine cone close? So what are the children going to say? Water. The water made it close. Oh, why do you think the water made it close. What happens when it rains and the seeds are in there and they're not ready to come out? 
the pine cloves were automatically closed to protect the little seed from washing out, from draining out of their little pine cone. So they naturally close. Then, in the morning, when the sun is out, when the wind is out, they begin to open again. So what I would suggest is leave the pine cone out for children to observe. Leave all of them out and you will see that the pine cone, even if, it's, if you take it out of the water like this, it will continue to close completely. And it will probably take, depending on where you put it, it will start opening up within a couple of days, maybe even probably by next day, you can see it start to open. So this is an extension of your experiment for them to see what happens after it starts drying up. The children probably will not understand until they actually see it drying up. Then they're going to understand that the water caused the cone to completely close and there's where you go in to protect the seed from washing out and now that the, the it's not raining now it's going to open up an excellent excellent ex little simple experiment for children to observe record in their journal and talk about and now click on the next video so you so i can demonstrate how to make a pine cone bird feeder, an extension of our pine cones. Thank you.